Hi, I'm Pam Anderson Livingston, the Resident Services Coordinator with Ships Cove Apartments in Fall River, Mass. I work for Operation Pathways based out of Washington, D.C. Operation Pathways has multiple sites across the country. Ships Cove was very fortunate to be chosen to participate in the Old Ways, A Taste of African Heritage, Healthy Cooking Classes. Today, we are going to look at incorporating greens into our diet with a nice smoothie and because it's so hot out, we're going to do a black eyed pea salad that doesn't involve any cooking. I hope you enjoy. So we'll do the always black eyed pea salad first because it's supposed to sit in the refrigerator for an hour before you eat it. And we know we're not gonna let it sit there for an hour before we eat it. So, my trusty assistant, Denise, can you get me an onion, the celery, mm -hmm. the red bell pepper? Mm -hmm. Okay, Denise, there are two cans of black eyed peas back there. Can you open those and drain them and rinse them with cold water for me? I bought organic, but you don't have to buy organic. And I do not ordinarily have a seat, Ron. Got the sticker on it there. So this calls for half of a red bell pepper dice. This is kind of a small red bell pepper though. See, organically grown. So I am going to use the whole thing. And as far as I'm concerned, the more vegetables you add to anything, the better. So we're going to cut out the little bits of seed and white flesh in here. I had sardines yesterday. Oh, excellent. Yeah. We've been talking a lot about oh, sardines? fish. Now I'm cutting everything kind of small because it's going into a salad. If it were going to be, if we were going to toss this in a frying pan with oil and cook it up, then I might cut it a little bit bigger because it would shrink. You got the sticker on. Let me see. It's calling for two stalks of celery. You need to pull them off and rinse them before you cut Yes. So you know what? And that's organic celery. Let's use at least three stalks of celery. I always, if you're gonna overdo it with any part of your recipe, overdo it with the vegetables. Yeah. Rinse everything, okay. and then hand it to me. All right. And then I do not throw out the tops to the celery. The tops to the celery are so good for you and so flavorful. I add them I add them to soups and stews. It gives soups and stews a really nice flavor. I can eat, you can even add them if you are making home fries. People throw a lot of stuff out that's actually the best part of the plant. So we're going to add this to our bowl. There's our red pepper. All right, now it calls for a half of a medium yellow onion. Now, I have to tell you that when I was in the store, the Vidalia onions were right beside the yellow onions. And the Vidalia onions are so beautiful. I didn't know that's yellow. This looks like an onion. There are yellow onions, there are white onions, well, are there are scallions, there are shallots. I, are like shallots. I, know, I, I know the difference by sight, but if you don't know the difference by sight, everything in the grocery store is always labeled. Now, the Vidalia onions were right beside the yellow onions in the store, and the Vidalia onions are really beautiful. I roll around and stop and shop today. I didn't see any onions anywhere. Well, right there. onions, shallots, garlic, um, 
are usually the right potatoes. here the potatoes. Into the potato? Yes. Uh -huh. into the potato? Because anything that can sit out and remain room temperature for a long period of time is usually grouped together, and that includes those three. They last a long time. You don't need to refrigerate them. Um, but I will tell you, yellow onions are better for you than Vidalia onions. People cook a lot with Vidalia onions because they have a sweeter taste to them, but in terms of better for your health, the yellow onion is better for you. What other color onions? I like red onions. Oh, I love red onions in my salad. And I like different onions for different things, too. Um, I like to put shallots in a um, crock pot or a big clay pot when I do a roast. And when I cook fish, I like to use scallions. And we are growing some white onions and some scallions down in our garden. Has anyone taken a walk down to see the garden? You know what I forgot? I looked at somebody's window. I didn't see anything. I got to look and see. Oh, the garden is coming out beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I'm going to give this a few extra chops just because I don't think that most people like a great big piece of onion when they bite into a salad. I always use a rocker knife whenever I chop vegetables. That makes small pieces of onion that big thing. A, a good knife is really key to being able to cook good. Now my eyes are starting to water. Cold water first. Yep. I should have done these last, right? Okay, Denise, if you can add that for me. Can you do something for me? Sure. I need three tablespoons of apple cider in the bowl. So I always use Bragg's organic raw unfiltered apple cider. It has a great, the best kind. it's fantastic. It has a great zip to it. When anything calls for oil, I always use extra virgin olive oil. And I always buy it in a glass bottle that is tinted a dark color because it helps save the olive oil longer, retain all of the good stuff, the nutrients. And when you buy plastic, I worry about, you know, all the yucky stuff in the plastic leaching into whatever you're buying. Um, this keeps the flavor really nice, too. So extra virgin olive oil is the first pressed. You don't ever want to buy olive oil that has been extracted from the olives using heat because the heat destroys all of the nutrients. So then what's the purpose? I need, um, I think I need two tablespoons, yes, two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. And then we're going to do, it calls for a pinch of paprika. Paprika will add heat to the recipe. And we're going to add a pinch of sea salt. Okay, you can pour the beans in while we're... These are so good for you. I don't use them in soup. Only a half a cup of black-eyed peas. It's a half a cup of black-eyed peas is one serving. It's only 70 calories. And there are two different kinds of fiber. They're soluble and insoluble. I'm getting these peas all over the place. <laughs> I really am a messy cook. And black-eyed peas contain mostly insoluble. How did I say that? Insoluble? 
fiber, which helps lower your blood cholesterol. There's a few over here too. And insoluble fiber. I mean, did I say insoluble? It's yes, mostly soluble, mostly soluble fiber. Soluble fiber also helps slow absorption of carbohydrates in the bloodstream, which is important for some of us who worry about diabetes. I'm going to put this in the refrigerator to chill. <laughs> All right, so I need two thirds. It's calling for two thirds a cup of cherries or blueberries, so I bought both. Uh, you can put this right in the blender. Okay, two thirds a cup of frozen cherries. And I bet you folks didn't know that cherries, tart cherries, will help you fall asleep at night. Really? Yep. What is the the berry most often eaten in the United States? Does Strawberry. It have People are so smart. Is that right? Strawberry. Strawberry. Actually, what comes in second place? Blueberry. You people are fantastic. All about raspberry. We've got men. We've got men eating. Okay. Okay. Which what is, is what is, is the fruit very, very that is eaten most often worldwide? Apple. Food. You don't know something. Oh, fruit. Fruit. A banana. Fruit. With fruit. You got it. Uh -huh. <laughs> the banana. You know what? I was just reading this weekend about how green banana peels, you can cook them. Mm -hmm. So, really? we're going to add a and banana. eat them after you cook them? Yeah, the peels. Wow. Green banana peels. All right. I need someone to wash the fresh spinach for me with cold water. Cold packed naturally with raw honey. And a lot of honey, they heat when they extract it. Once right. again, heat. If you can get anything that's been processed cold, I'll well, never even see that. I, no, I got this right from the market. Really? I got it at Market Basket, but I'm sure they sell it at other stores. It's called Wee Bee Honey. Oh boy, there's nothing like honey. If you have to use a sweetener for anything, always make it honey or maple syrup. A dash of cinnamon. Oh, and peanut butter. Mm -hmm. That's not what this was, the peanut butter. No, what? Peanut butter? Now, and the other thing is if your honey crystallizes on you, you know how when you get down to the bottom of a jar of honey, it starts to get really rock hard, mm -hmm. and you might think it's time to throw the honey out. Don't throw that honey out. That's still good stuff. Honey does not go bad. The ancient Egyptians used honey for a lot of things, and they used it for medicinal purposes and to put on cuts and everything. Yeah. Honey stays good forever. You All you have to do is put the jar in the microwave, yeah, yeah, warm it up just a little bit, bit, and then it liquefies the honey. This is... Um, Teddy Organic All Natural Creamy Peanut Butter. Peanut butter should never have any ingredients but peanuts. And when you look at a lot of commercial peanut butter, you will see that there are added oils and added sugar. Why do we need added oil and added sugar? Peanut butter has its own oil. But you need butter. No, there's no <coughs> butter in peanut butter. Well, why is it, why is it peanut butter if there's no the butter? buttery consistency. Now, this is a nice way to add protein. Peanut butter has protein. A little bit of fat and protein. And fat helps a lot of um, nutrients absorb into your body. Mm -hmm. A lot of nutrients won't absorb without a little bit of fat. The recipe called for rice milk. But I couldn't find rice milk at the yeah, store almond. that I went to. So I bought almond coconut milk. Ooh, that's, that's good. good. Which yeah. I kind of prefer. Yeah. So yeah. maybe the rice milk really was in the store. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I ignored it. Yeah, I rice milk. <laughs> that's okay. Your excuse. But, um, just as long as it doesn't have added sugar, okay, yeah. or added 
pretend sugar, yeah. anything that pretends to be hmm. sugar, which this has n nothing. It has zero sugar, so that's that's okay. So let me see how much of this we're going to add. We're going to add one cup of this. And Denise, I think there's a bag of ice in the refrigerator, if you could get that for me. Oh, jeez! Oh, Pam! <laughs> what the? <laughs> Pam is nervous. It's all right. Wow. <laughs> this is... What do you think this is? I love Lucy. <laughs> she nervous. <laughs> no. Yes. Yes. Reality TV. Right here. Right here. <laughs> All right, and a cup of ice, so I'm adding. Cinnamon is so good for you. <laughs> Don't do this at home, kids. <laughs> Cinnamon is an anti-inflammatory, so it's very good for you. Mm -hmm. All right, now let's see how this goes. I've never used this before. Okay, nothing has happened. Oh! Oh! alone there were 150 different types of greens and wow. Americans really weren't big on eating greens until the Africans came over and it began uh, down south people started cooking greens and they cooked them for hours you were telling me how your mother cooked mother hers for hours <laughs> she is welcome to come up here and do a lesson anytime and they would cook them with a ham hock mm -hmm. many experts say the greens are the number one thing, number one food we should regularly add to our diet. Greens are very low in calories. A serving only has 24, 25 to 40 calories. They're very high in nutrients. They're packed with fiber, iron, calcium, vitamins, and other minerals. And just one cup of cooked greens can get you more than a day's worth of vitamins and nutrients. And it, greens are beneficial to blood and circulation, kidney and liver, lungs and breathing, and digestion. So if you want to pass those around, this is your greens guide. It'll tell you which greens are salty, hearty, peppery, or bitter. We did a couple of recipes here a right. few weeks ago. And everyone loved the recipe with the collard greens. Oh, okay. Not so much the dandelion greens. That was <laughs> not popular. That's a peppery green. So we're going to hand these out also. And here is a list. This is the most valuable thing I'm passing out. It's places to mm -hmm. fit your greens. It tells you how to put, make, you get put your greens into everything you eat, whether it's a sandwich, eggs, Take out smoothies, canned soup, making green chips in the oven. So this is a great handout right here. So, and then the other two handouts that I have for you folks, here's the recipe for the black-eyed peas. 
Do you remember the recipe we did a few weeks back where we did, I think it was the sautéed collard greens. Mm -hmm. And oh, good. the recipe did not call for beans, but I held up a can of small white beans that we drained and rinsed with white with uh, cold water. And I said, this is, this is, now I'm gonna make this a complete meal. And I added a can of beans that I bought for 89 cents. And for 89 cents, we added protein to our meal. Now our salad here has protein in it too because it has beans. Beans are a great way of getting your protein, especially in the summer months, opening up a can of beans and rinsing them with cold water, instead of heating up your home cooking animal meat. And it's so much cheaper. Um, I like the way uh, the cookbook author, Julia Della Croce, puts it. Beans are vegetables with the power of meat, and our ancestors could not have done without them. Beans are surely a super plant food. They're rich in protein, calcium, and fiber, and low in fat with zero cholesterol. Beans are one of the cheapest foods we can find. A can of beans costs about 89 cents and contains about three servings of beans. So we're going to pass this around also. And then here's your bean cheat sheet. It gives you a list of all the different types of beans. And when it comes to beans, just it's important to get them into your diet. Just eat the kind you like. Experiment. Some people like beans. the big, meaty, dark kidney beans. Mm -hmm. Those are fantastic for you. I always go by the motto that um, anything, the more color something has, the better it is for you. You know how you, have, you, know, you go to a cookout and you bring dishes? This is a good dish to bring to a cookout. It mm -hmm. is. Quick. That's an excellent and dish. Inexpensive, quick, and pretty yeah. Good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The celery sets it off for me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It sets it off. Gives it the taste. Right. I, I love a celery in cooking too, like in soups and stews, and um, and I like to add a celery mm -hmm. to the pot when I'm cooking the chicken. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's good. Yeah. Then you have to heat up the oven, have to do nothing. Wow. Mm -hmm. I was iffy about the, oh. the drink. Stick them. I was iffy about the drink, but it's pretty good. You like it? Yeah. Stick them meat pan. You cook it in no time. Does anybody taste the spinach in the drink? No. Mm -hmm. No. No. Nope. Oh, that is good. <laughs> oh, it's the mix of the peanut butter and the blueberry, I think. So I really. Yeah. That's what you taste, right? That's what I taste. I don't. I don't taste the cherries. I taste the peanut, peanut butter and the blueberry. There you go. That's a really great drink. I taste the peanut butter and banana. Mmm. Yeah. Now that you mention it, I taste the banana a little bit. Wow, that's really good.